Ugh, I wish it wasn't 100 degrees outside, but whatever. Ugh, trash will be next week. Uh, but for now, back to Brockton Celestial Forge. 5. Chapter 4. Recovery. I woke up on the floor of what used to be my bedroom, before I had shifted to the sleeping in a pocket dimension. The less bedroom and more the bed area of my weirdly shaped studio apartment. It was easy to remember why I had moved as I took in the smells, textures, and general dinginess of my surroundings. I'd spent the night with a meager amount of bedding between me and the questionable carpeting of the apartment. It was the best I could do without trying to fit my mattress through the closet door again. It had taken too long the first time and turned into a game of furniture Tetris in my apartment and my attempts to get the damn thing to fit. Still, with how my back felt right now, sipping one room away from Tinker Tech from a Tinker Tech bomb didn't sound as bad as it had the previous night. My alarm had sounded, but with my limited sleep, I was seriously considering skipping the morning run. I figured frantic melee combat had to count for cardio, right? I was probably due for a rest day. That was when I felt another constellation approach within the Celestial Forge. I still had extra reach for my last connection, and it had grown further since. A link, still a link solidified to a small note in the Knowledge constellation. The ability I latched onto was called Not a Stupid Grunt. The odd name was kind of appropriate because it definitely was not stupid now. My scientist's ability had boosted me to a genius. That was a bit abstract since genius is a pretty broad range and quantifying intelligence is a difficult process. I was more focused on the doctorate level knowledge I had picked up from that ability. This ability didn't come with any new information. It was just a straight cognitive booster and it was considerably more pronounced than anything I'd picked up before. This ability would let me strip any non-parahuman scientist in the world with only moderate effort. Combined with the boost I had already received in my mechanical knowledge from scientists and black thumb, I was probably as good as mechanical system as most tinkers. Certainly better than anyone who didn't specialize in the subject. One thing I had been concerned about was the prospect that this power would alter my mind. My passenger had been open about that. I didn't have the conflict levers most bare humans did, but there was a certain amount of mental alteration that was necessary if I was going to be able to operate at the level of a tinkerer. It seems that this was the first significant step in that direction. Somehow the idea of going to stock shelves for eight hours seemed laughable. This wasn't a too-good-for-menial-labor way of thinking. Over the last day, I had gone from moderate understanding of mechanical engineering to career mechanic to the kind of person who would lead industrial design teams to the kind of person whose research would be distributed to industrial design teams. There was no reason for me to keep my day job at this point. My finances would take a hit, but I was pretty sure I could fish a car out of a river and have it running perfectly within a day. I'd be able to find a way to capitalize on my powers if, just from highly efficient repairs. It would result in a short-term hit to my settings, but I could endure it for a couple of weeks. Waiting two hours before the start of sh shift was a dick move, but if they weren't going to pay for full-time employees' benefits, then they shouldn't expect loyalty. That phone call was less polite on my manager's part, but the deed was done, and I had a full day ahead of me. I started with the absolute best possible use of my time, and went back to sleep. Three hours later, I was rested, fed, caffeinated, and ready to try running at a time other than stupid o'clock. When it was Monday, there was a different tone to the mid-morning quit traffic, but enough people had, enough people apparently had flexible enough schedules that they were able to exercise at this time. I wonder if there's ever a time of day when the nice part of the city isn't set by joggers. Maybe it's just natural background for the place like this. Clean open area means you get joggers. Cramped, dirty area means drug dealers. 
and homeless people. It was probably the boardwalk enforcers who maintained that particular balance. After my run, I effectively took it easy for the rest of the day. After lunch, I made my way to the library and spent the afternoon reading. I wanted to gauge the effect of whatever my new intelligence was doing. Information was definitely easier to retain, and my reading speed had increased substantially. I wasn't exactly speedering my way through the entire library, but I could see how it would be possible to quickly master a field of study with these abilities. I want to get there overnight, and an afternoon of browsing various subjects hadn't resulted in that much improvement. But a few months of dedicated effort would have me outstripping people who devoted years of their life towards a specific field. When it came to machinery, I was already well ahead of what any non-tinker would be able to manage. Uh, I'm going to have to stop there because it's 100 degrees out and I want to go in, into my AC cooled apartment. Uh, thanks for listening, if anyone's even been listening. Never mind, out.